So hello everyone, and uh, today's podcast is about uh, uh, co- uh, relationship between mole and mass. Mole and mass. So as we say before, and I actually used this slides before. This is uh, roughly a、uh, softball. If we can imagine, you can have one mole of softballs together, which means you have six point zero two two times ten to the twenty third softballs. It's going to be have a tremendous mass. So now you have the golf ball now, and each golf ball is going to mass differently, much smaller, much lighter compared to the softball. But if you start to imagine, you have one moles of soft、uh, the the golf ball together compare、uh, you know golf ball together. This also gets、uh, tremendous、uh, amount of mass. However, that amount of mass is going to be significantly smaller than one mole of a soft ball. And now you're looking at the、uh, glass marble. Uh, same thing, same argument. Each individual marble will have a less mass compared to the golf ball, much much less compared to the soft ball. So the mass of one mole of the glass, the of this glass balls will be much less than the previous two. So same logic goes to the rice and goes to the、uh, sand. Goes to this end. So the key learning here is the mass of the collection of particles for one mole has to be different from different substances. So then, when we have one mole of any particular substance, we should have a very specific mass associated with that mass. So that is in turn going to be turn.、Uh, So those are the ones we're looking at uh, the uh, uh, objects that we can really see in this land scale with our naked eye. But when we get down to the smallest one, like in the atoms,、uh, the picture quickly changes. As shown here, on this balance is weighing about twelve point zero 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 grams of carbon. This is of pure carbon. Is actually in this twelve grams, twelve point zero zero, twelve point zero 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 grams of carbon. It contains exactly one mole of carbon atoms. And now you can see the significance of why we use the mole concept. This is essentially the carbon atoms are so tiny. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is essentially billion times billion of the carbon atoms, and give you this、uh, manageable account,、uh, amount of material. Manageable means we can see it with our naked eye. We can actually move around. We can actually measure them. So here's another. Here's another、uh, demonstration, and you can see from picture here, from left to right, you have a copper metal. Follow the.、Uh, you have. You have the copper metal followed by the aluminum metal, sulfur element, and this is now is a compound. It's called potassium dichromate, and、uh, it's another compound. It's water, and、uh, this one, the bluish one, is copper two chloride dihydrate. Don't worry too much about it. You're going to start learning those compound names and the formulas, ions and polyatomic ions names and formulas pretty soon. And、uh, the key conclusion we can draw from here, those observations, is the mass of one mole of each element is different. It's different. So that's the key conclusion. So then we have a new concept now. It's defined as the molar mass. It's essentially you take one mole. Of any given entity, in this case, I use the a in the parenthesis to emphasize on that. It is crucially important. You use this approach. One mole of any given substance, a, is equal to, is equivalent with the molar mass in grams for that particular substance. 
So it's the molar mass in grams. Molar mass is defined as the mass of any given substance that is, will have one mole of the particles. One mole of the particles. So this is a very important key point. A uh, very important point is the molar mass. The molar mass of an element is the atomic mass for the element. If you go to any periodic table, you can find atomic mass number for that particular uh, for any particular element you are interested in, and uh, that's automatically becomes the molar mass of that element. The key point for this is to give you conversion factors. So essentially what you're looking at here is one mole of any substance A divided by molar mass of substance A will equal to 1, will equal to 1. Vice versa, molar mass of A divided by one mole of A is also equal to 1. It's all originated from this definition of a molar mass. And, uh, Now let's take a look at some uh, couple of examples for the mole and the mass relationship. So the question asks is how many grams of silicon are there in 0 0.456 moles of silicon? So now is actually uh, we have looking at this it's the prime example we can actually use we can actually use uh, uh, we can actually use uh, the monkey bar approach to solve the problem and first what we need to do is you need to get the molar mass because we're looking at the question is question is grams that's what you want to know in moles so first thing first we need to check on the molar mass for the element silicon for the element silicon so you can actually switch to any of those online interesting interactive uh, element tables if you're looking on the element number 14 you will see silicon silicon has the atomic mass about 28 about 28 so in this case silicon will have the molar mass for silicon for silicon is 28 grams per mole. What is this translated into is one mole of silicon will equal to the molar mass of the silicon checked on the periodic table is 28 grams of silicon. And as you can notice here, this equivalency equations only applies in the context of silicon of silicon and if we switch to the other systems this is going to get complicated very quickly so now you have this critical one so what you use the monkey bar for we do a start four five six mole more of what crucially important you have to label it so it's more of silicon and where do you want to get grams of silicon so you say naturally I'm going to cancel the mole of silicon and I do have a relationship between mole of silicon and more grams of silicon. Very importantly you have to take those parentheses uh, seriously. And, uh, it will give you the guidance later on when you're trying to solve more complex problems. So essentially here's one mole of silicon is roughly 28 grams of silicon. It's equivalent. It's equivalent. So now you can actually now actually we can cancel the mole of silicon just punching the numbers be careful about sick fix and this one gives you 12.8 grams of silicon that will be the answer is how many grams of silicon so now let's talk about example number two example number two and uh, as we can see it's now we want moles starting with grams of iron and uh, what would be the molar mass for iron that would be 55 point 
0.84. That's the it's at average atomic mass. You can learn that in detail in the next unit. So it's 59.4, uh, 55.89 grams per mole. What does that mean? It means one mole of iron is equivalent to 55.89 grams of iron. So if you notice that, again and again, I write it out extensively. Each little step is very, very easy bit to handle. However, if you can string those little things together, you're going to be able to solve very complex problems. And uh, this one gives you the crucial conversion factors. So we started with 7.83 times 10 to the negative 2 grams of iron. If you check on the periodic table, Fe will be the symbol for iron, which is universal. So what we want to get is mole of Fe. You obviously have to cancel grams of Fe. One mole of Fe to iron and uh, the swan becoming 55.89 grams. The grams canceled, carry out the math, and this one will give you 1.40 times 10 to the negative 3 mole of what? Iron. And that will be the answer. That will be the answer. So since from the those above two examples and I clearly demonstrate to you what's the relationship in between the mole and the molar mass. Okay, so I want to show you graphically how you do it, and this is a very important one. I want you to pay attention. Mole of uh, Let's erase that, makes, make it look good. Okay. Mole of A, we have a first triangle, number of particles. It's also A. So this one will be the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, this is number. That's the relationship between the mole and particles. It's mole and particles. But now today you learned there's actually another triangle. There will be the mass of the pure substance we're referring to, and on this color would be molar mass. Okay, it's in grams. And what it does is it's going to establish conversion factors. So now you start looking at it is a very interesting picture starts to uh, emerge for one goes to the other it has to go through the mole and also importantly you have to looking at it you have to looking at it in a very logic way a very logic way so this is kind of a logic map for more. So with that, I wrap up uh, the broadcast and uh, please go to the corresponding worksheet to work on those problems. Thank you very much.